Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Anna from HiTarget. Today we are going to talk about three base functions of high survey, including PPK and steady, cargo volume and stake up, the last troubleshooting. Let's start about the part one, PPK and steady. What's the PPK? PPK, the full name is pod processing kinematic. After positioning observation, join post processing of the positioning data collected by the two receiver. You can see the red box at the first picture. This is PPK mode icon. If you want to use PPK mode, don't forget the PPK icon at the detailed survey interface. How do we use the PPK mode? It is very easy to do that. Press turn on record. The rover start to record status data. And click start mark to avenge point. When we we'll click finish mark, it will save the mark point. When we turn off record, and we can view the file information and delete the file in the project PPK. Okay, we have knew how to use PPK mode, but one more thing tell for you. When you use PPK mode, open the story right next data. That is very important. So don't forget to check it. Look at the picture, the red box at the, at the pictures. When we are finished PPK mode, but some people want to check this mark point. So how we can check this mark point? Of course, it is HGO software. So this mark point will be shown in the point interface. Okay, next. It is static mode. Many use a new dead and it is very important features on GNS receiver. But in the rover mode, if we need to do static collection at the same time, it can do that. High survey rows static mode already supports that duration features. After the special, specified collection time is enabled, the current correction will stop and the receiver will automatically shut down. I think these features are very helpful for us to do static mode, but these are only support on static mode. So we need to take static mode option as the picture below, the second red box. Static, static data management. We can add all of the static file and search all of the static file. But how is download? Just connect the receiver by Wi-Fi. It supports download the static file to the controller. So sometimes we don't have the USB cable on our hand. This method will be helpful for us to get the static file.
as we know, the HGO subwheel is very powerful. And we know our steady file, the format is GNS. So HGO can convert GNS format to RINES. Let me show a video how to convert GNS format to RINES. Open the Rhinus uh, commerce Rhinus tool and import the JS data file and select a uh, Rhinus version. Okay, we can see the information window, the commerce finished. So we can get the RINES file in the plot. Okay, let's take a moment in the pose. Okay, let me see the result, the post result. Oh, so many people <laughs> select the no skeleton. Okay. Okay, we go on the PowerPoint. The PAP2 cargo volume. Calculate the volume 2D and 3D parameter and DTML error of two surface. Uh, between a DTML surface and a predetermined elevation. Okay, let's start to learn how to use the volume features. Firstly, we need to select the actual surface from the list. But look at the red box at the picture. Here are four options. So what's the difference for these methods? Here's an explanation of the four methods, reference elevation, point, surface, and the last defined range. Such as explanations still don't help us understand what they are. Don't worry, I'll show you some pictures to help, help you imagine the different rings. For example, ABC is the selected surface. First one, elevation. 
we are only input the reference elevation. So it's volume like that. And second, reference point. Software will get the elevation from point. So the volume are same with first one reference elevation. And the reference surface. There have two surfaces, as we know. A, B, C, that is the selective surface. Now we add the reference surface A, B, C, A point, B point, C point. So the calculation, the volume as the picture. The last one, defined range. As you see that, this will calculate the public volume. So now I'll give you a brief introduction to how to use different range. As we know, we are need to create a surface. So we add this point that creates the surface must be within the boundary as the picture at the left pictures. Software will prompt us to save the DTM volume range file. After selecting different range calculation methods, click compute and view the volume result. Here are the results of different range. And some explanation. If we, need, if we need to share the volume result, just click the export icon to export the report. We can see the red box at the first one picture. This is the export icon. Okay, we are already know how to use the volume features. Then there's the feature we need to know. Elevation difference. This feature is to calculate the elevation difference between the current point and the feed point of the surface. So that how much dirt can we cut or fill in the surface? So how we can use the elevation difference? First one, hit the list icon as the red box in the picture. And second, add a point to create a surface. And the next, we can preview and click OK to save. The last, we can see the information windows, whether to cut or fill. Here is a video. input the surface name.
and chose the pawn. Okay, click the OK. We can get the surface on map. We can see the below window cut off field. Okay, the part three stay out. I have a question. What's the stakeout? Decide upon light face on the drawings and use measuring equipment and methods to find them in the field. High survey rows support two methods for staking out features. One is stake pawn and two is stake line. So how we use take upon features is very easy. Click selection icon and select a point from the list and then press OK. So we can start take points. Here I have an operation video. Let's watch it. Select the point from point list. It's very close. Okay, we are finished the stake point. Our stake point support offset stake. Sometimes we can calculate the offset point with horizontal distance and edge mute parameter and use it as a current stake point. We can see the last picture. The stake point is changed. And we can see the point B1112. This is the selected point. And the stake point in the picture, we can see that. Okay, the next stake line. High survey row support for defined type. Like arc, spiral curve, and circle. First, we are learn how to use the different light. Keep the library icon, then define parameter and keep to OK to save. And we can keep sample point icon to input the mileage. The next, define arc and spiral curves. There's the step are same with different light. Also click the library icon, then define parameter and then keep the OK to save. We also can do the input the mileage of the point to be stake. Define circle is also 
keep the library icon and then define the parameter and keep the OK. So we look at the picture, we can get a circle on the map. Now we are already know how to use stakeout features, but here has some practical tips to help stakeout. First one, AR stake. I think you all like AR stake. Let's watch the video. AR stakeout will be more convenient for primary surveyors who don't have good sense of direction. So here is a post. Do you like AR stakeout features? Okay, let us take uh, the result, the poll result. Many users uh, like the AR state. More than uh, 18%. Okay, we are continued. The second, CAD features. High survey role support two methods about importing CAD data. First one method is in external data management. We can see the video. External data management import CAD file and wait a moment Okay, here are the layers. We can get the layer in the CAD file. And second is CAD icon on stakeout interface. Let's watch the video. Actually, we already have selecting point and light or method for staking out, but we do an optimization for moving that out for sub interface. Make surveyor can select high frequently functions quickly and saving their time.
and we can select the point from the map to do stakeout point. It's also we can select the light from the map. We can get the point on the on this line. As you said, we can get the sticker point on the map. I remember some people ask me, when is takeout what the receiver direction always change? As the video, the direction always change. So how to fix the direction? Two methods to fix direction. As we can see the red box at the picture, fix direction and controller direction. They are both can fix direction. Please wait a moment in the pose. Okay, let me see the result. Actually, the fixed direction uh, can help for us to find out the direction. Okay, the last part, part for troubleshooting. Problem one, how to check the receiver firmware? and multiple version of the receiver. And problem two, how to view module information of the receiver. And problem three, how to view the service supported by the receiver. Problem four, where can I find the log file of high survey road abnormal problem? Okay, let's watch the video. Check the firmware version, we are just pressed five times at the series number. Then it will show the motherboard firmware version. We can get the motherboard firmware in the interface. And then we can, oh, sorry. And then we can get the antenna information. And this is the module information. And here is the service information. We can get the motherboard series number.
here we can find out the DHD float. We can get the log file. One is error and one is operation. So when the highway road is at abnormal, please send log fault for us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time. Now it's QA time. Okay, we only have 10 minutes to answer your question. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Thank you for your presentation. I yeah. have a I, I have a question about uh, uh, CAD AI import function. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what kind of uh, character code can accept? Uh, for example, ASCII code or Unicode. Uh huh. So sorry, uh, I can get it. Uh, there, there's many, uh, many character codes. Uh, there's many character codes. Uh, for example, uh, ASCII code, uh, in code, UTF, Japanese. Uh, uh, what kind of character code can accept? Um. You you want to import the uh, DA, CAD DA, file, the DXF file the format, right? Yes, format. Oh, DSS file. Okay. DX, uh, DX, so DX, DXF it also file. can support. Yep, I can hear. So DXF DXF file is text format, right? Yeah. Yes. So right. there's many uh, there's some some the text files uh, is uh, combined by uh, some sorry sorry uh, so there's many type of text format. Uh, the difference is character code. Uh, what kind of character? I, I code? can give you. Mm. Uh, sorry, I can give you uh information. Uh, we can support the SF uh, CAD file. The format is uh, 2008 and, uh, and yeah. 2020, the mm -hmm. version. 
Yes, I know, I know. Mm. But, yeah, uh, yeah. My question is character code. Hello, Yano. Uh, yes. Your question, I will uh, answer you later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and, and it's possible you can send uh, email for us. Yes. Yes. Okay. When? Hello, Elliot. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Finally, how yeah. are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Are you okay? Yeah, oh, the I'm last okay. question. It's ASCII. It is ASCII format. The DXF, uh, it should be an ASCII yeah. format. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, I was uh, uh, I was asking, is there any possibility to make more detailed videos on how each procedure of the CAD import and the CAD uh, selection of points mm -hmm. now in the new in the new version uh can we select the midpoint of the uh, will it accept the midpoint of a segment as a vertex or uh, it's only uh, uh, accepts the bo the border of the segments the two end points of the segment in the last version, the midpoint of the segment was not be uh, it was not being able to to be selected when you are uh, staking lines. The, it was jumping from the end point to the end point. Now the midpoint is it possible to be staked out? Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear. Yeah. So you you problem the the essay format, right? Uh, In drawing of the XF format, when you are staking out lines. Yeah. Is is the midpoint considered as okay. a vertex uh, in the new version? Because in the can, old can form, it was the, not. Can you for us? Hello, hello, Elliot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, can you send an email for us? Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you have any technical issues, please contact us. Thank you for your time.